Yo, what's going on y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video and today I want to talk for a bit about the Indiana Pacers who are one of my favorite league pass watches in the entire league this past season. The offense was incredible. The young talent that they have on their roster is also really intriguing and I think the Pacers have added on to that in a big way with one of my favorite off seasons out of anybody. If I have to pick like my top three biggest winners of this off season, the Pacers are for sure in that conversation and I think what they've done so far, what they did last season is kind of compounding itself to the point that the Pacers are going to be really good a lot sooner than people are expecting. This rebuild is on a fast track. So in today's video, I want to break down a little bit about why the Pacers were so fun this past season, what they've done this offseason, and how that just builds on everything that they've already got established. This past season was basically the first full year of a rebuild over in Indiana. After the year prior, they traded away most of their core guys. DeMontis Sabonis, who had been an all-star for Indiana and had established himself as one of the best young big men in the league, was traded over to Sacramento in exchange for Tyrese Halliburton, who was having an incredible season for Sacramento, but it seemed like the Kings probably had to choose between either him or De'Aaron Fox as their lead guard of the future. They went with De'Aaron Fox, picking up DeMontis Sabonis, an all-star caliber player in the process, and him and Fox were incredibly successful this past year. They brought Sacramento to their first playoff berth in like 16 years. They were the three seed, and they lost in seven games to Golden State, but have established themselves as one of the best guard big man duos in the entire league, and there's still a lot of room for Sacramento to grow. So for them, it was a big win of a trade. Meanwhile, for the Pacers, it's also been a massive success. In that first half season that Tyrese played for Indiana post-trade deadline, he was electric. He showed a lot of what he showed in Sacramento, but now in a more featured and prominent role, he was dominating at an all-new level. And it carried over into this season, which we're going to talk about. But right from the get-go in that first half season, I think everybody could tell that Tyrese was a future all-star and a franchise cornerstone in the making. They also trade away Victor Oladipo who was amazing for the Pacers at times before injuries really derailed his entire career. I want to make a full video detailing how good he was in 2018 when he made All-NBA and he was an all-defensive guy. If you want to see that video, let me know in the comment section below. I feel like he just deserves his flowers for what he did in that season. They also dealt away Karis LeVert, who seemed like he was going to be a big part of their future before the era kind of crumbled in front of them. And yeah, they began this rebuild in this past season. It was a really fun first year of that process. The Pacers this past season went 35 and 47, finishing five games out of the Eastern Conference play-in tournament, which isn't bad at all. Again, it was the first year of their rebuild. The Eastern Conference was really tough this season, and also, Tyrese Halliburton missed a significant chunk of time in the middle of the year. Before he got hurt on around January 11th, the Pacers were 23-18. and 18. Halfway through the year, they were five games over 500, good for the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, there still is a chance, even if Tyrese did stay healthy, that they end up falling out of the play-in tournament, or at least towards one of the bottom spots but they probably would have been in it if Tyree stayed healthy the full season and been in conversations to maybe make the playoffs themselves. So that's something that the Pacers can absolutely build on going into this year. Again, led by Tyrese Halliburton, who had an amazing season this past year. He averaged over 20 and 10 a game, nearly did it on 50, 40, 90 splits, something that I think is very achievable for him at some point in his career, even some point soon. He became a first-time All-Star and solidified himself even more than he already was as a franchise cornerstone and one of the best young floor generals in the entire NBA. And I think Tyrese Halliburton has another level he can take his game to because he's still incredibly young. And this was the first year in which he was truly the centerpiece of the franchise. Meanwhile, Benedict Matherin, who the Pacers got at the sixth overall pick, had a really good rookie season. He was a bit up and down efficiency wise, but overall showed some incredible offensive flashes, whether he was showing off high level athleticism, just destroying guys at the rim or finishing with these crazy layups. He had a lot of really difficult shots that he knocked down showing that he's capable of doing that and if he puts it all together consistently him and Tyrese are going to be one of the scariest one-two young offensive punches in this entire league. They also got great play from Andrew Nemhard, who they took in the second round. He showed a lot of promise as a secondary playmaker alongside Tyrese Halliburton. He was clutch in some big time moments too, notably most hitting a game winner against the Los Angeles Lakers. And he was pretty efficient overall as a scorer as a rookie. That's not something we typically see from rookie guards. Usually the efficiency takes a good 
bit to come along, but not for Andrew Nemhard. Building off of these guys, Miles Turner had the best season probably of his entire career. He averaged over 18 points per game, maintaining his over two block per game average, staying as one of the best rim protecting and floor stretching bigs in the entire league. And meanwhile, the Pacers extended him on a longer term contract saying that, hey, we're going to keep Miles Turner around as part of our future, which I think is a great decision because he's still really good and still relatively young with this core that again, I think could be competitive sooner than later. Other guys on the roster thrived as well with Buddy Heald continuing to be one of the best shooters on the planet. I feel like Aaron Neesmith kind of found his footing as a shooter coming out of Boston over to Indiana this past offseason. Isaiah Jackson had a really fun season as an athletic big with the ability to knock down an outside shot here and there. Jordan Wara showed up around the deadline and had probably the best half of a season that he's ever had. Overall, I feel like the Pacers are just brimming with really fun, interesting young talent that works well off of each other. Obviously, there's still room for improvement, in particular on the defensive end where it's abysmal over there, but it's a great start for a young rebuilding team. Again, it's their first year really kind of putting this thing together. But despite that, with some of the moves they've had this offseason, and again, a lot of the promise that they've shown, I think the Pacers are going to be ready to challenge a lot of teams in the East as soon as maybe this upcoming season. It all begins, of course, with them giving Tyrese Halliburton a five-year, $260 million extension to keep him as the face of the Pacers for the foreseeable future. I think this is a great deal. I've seen a lot of people call it an overpay, but you have to remember that numbers are going to continue to get bigger and bigger just as time goes on. That's the nature of the NBA. I mean, like 20 years ago, franchise level players were getting paid like a million dollars or a few million dollars. Like it's the way that the NBA is going. And plus again, Tyrese is a sub 25 year old 20 and 10 guy that can nearly shoot 50, 40, 90, orchestrate your offense. You've got to secure guys like that to a max contract. And with the way the cap keeps spiking and with how good I think Tyrese Halliburton can get, this deal might even look like a bargain in not that long. I really love the idea of locking him up long-term and I'm glad the Pacers did so. While signing Tyrese to that extension is probably the biggest move the Pacers are going to make this offseason, they did several other things that I think get A-plus grades. It begins with the draft where they took one of my favorite players in the entire class, someone who I would have loved to see my OKC Thunder select in Jarris Walker. Jarris is a high level defensive four out of Houston, who a lot of people consider to be the best defender in this entire class. He can guard a multitude of positions. He's incredibly physical. He's built like a truck. He can knock down outside shots, shooting just under 35% from deep this past season at Houston. And I think there's also a lot more offensive potential in him than he was allowed to show as a Houston Cougar. We saw some moments where he would dribble the ball and knock down some shots in the mid-range area, where he would create plays for himself and others off the dribble. And I think that's a role he can thrive in more in the NBA as he's allowed to explore his game more than he was in college. Plus, playing alongside a great young playmaker like Tyrese Halliburton and not being asked to do that much outside of his comfort zone, I think he'll have the opportunity to kind of work through things, find what works, and not have that immediate pressure of being one of the best players on the team. I really think Walker fits this Indiana team perfectly. It was one of my favorite fits in the entire draft. I'm glad they end up getting him because not only does he help with the defensive issues that they have while also theoretically being potentially potentially a great connecting offensive piece, but also he fills a position of need. That four spot is really the last spot where the Indiana Pacers kind of need to solidify a starting guy for right now. And I think Jairus Walker could be that starting four sooner than later. Later in the draft, they picked up Ben Shepard out of Belmont, who I don't know too much about. I've watched some of his film and he's an incredible shooter. I'll say that right off the bat. So the rich keep getting richer with these high level shooters that the Pacers have on the roster. And you know, you can never have too much shooting in today's game. Plus there is some intriguing defensive upside with him with some of his physical tools. I don't know if he'll ever truly be a 3 and D guy, but at the very least, they got another sharpshooter for Tyrese Halliburton to kick out to on the perimeter. The Tyrese extension, amazing. The draft, I thought they got it perfect. Then we get to this offseason, particularly in free agency, where they just keep making great moves left and right. And it begins with Bruce Brown. They sign him away from the defending champions on a two-year $45 million deal, which I really love. A lot of people are going to say, whoa, $22.5 million, a bit of an overpay for Bruce Brown. And yeah, I agree, it kind of is. But you have to overpay sometimes to lure a player away from a spot like Denver, where he literally just won a title. And plus, it's only a two-year deal with the second year being a team option. So if it doesn't 
work out if he's not quite the player that you wanted on this roster. You just declined that second year and you paid him this year when you had cap space that you weren't going to spend anywhere else anyways. I love the idea of this short-term deal for a guy who adds a lot of value to this team. Again, they add another defender, which is the biggest area of need in Bruce Brown, who's also an electric offensive connector. He knocked down some threes at big moments for the Nuggets in their finals run. He's an NBA champion, so he brings some of that experience over to Indiana. I think he slots in really well at that starting three spot. If they want to go with him there, I think they will. They could play him off the bench, but at the same time, I don't think you throw $22.5 million to a guy that you're going to have play off your bench, so I expect him to start, and I think him alongside Tyrese Halliburton and Benedict Matherin in that starting lineup is going to make life a lot easier. Plus, with the defense of Miles Turner and maybe Jairus Walker there starting, the Pacers could probably be a pretty solid defensive team when that starting front court is out there. And they followed up this move that I love with another one that I really love in picking up Obi Toppin from the New York Knicks for two second round picks. This is a great decision. Obi Toppin, again, could potentially fill that four spot if you want to go with him for a bit more offense, or you could go with Jairus Walker for a bit more defense. You've now got some options, and you take a chance on Obi Toppin, who's looked really good when he's gotten an extended leash over there in New York. There was a portion at the end of this season when Julius Randle was out with injury and Obi Toppin balled out like he went crazy. He was averaging like over 20 points per game. He was doing it on great efficiency. I've talked to a lot of Knicks fans. In fact, I did a Bleach Report live stream not too long ago where it was all about the Knicks and a lot of Knicks fans were saying that we want Obi Toppin to start this upcoming season, trade Julius Randle because we think Obi Toppin could fit a lot better and do a lot of what Julius Randle already brings to the table. Now, I don't think Obi Toppin's going to be like all NBA Julius Randle level this upcoming season, but I do think he's got a lot of untapped potential that could truly be unlocked in this Pacer system if they give him that starting four spot. He'll probably be allowed to do a lot more offensively than he was in New York. He'll be playing alongside an amazing playmaker in Tyrese Halliburton, the best that he's ever played alongside. The lobs between those two guys are going to be incredibly fun to watch. Like, I think Obi Toppin is one of my biggest breakout candidates for this upcoming season. I love this addition for this Pacers team that just keeps adding more interesting young talent. One more transaction I do want to note for the Pacers in this offseason is that they've traded Chris Duarte over to the Sacramento Kings. Now, we haven't gotten any details about what the Pacers are getting back in return for Duarte, so I can't really say, like, if I like this trade or don't like this trade. I mean, Duarte is a bit older, and he really didn't project as a foundational piece for this team going forward, so I understand it, and I'm just right now neutral on it. We'll see what they end up getting back, but overall, I don't think it's that big of a deal in the grand scheme of this offseason. So, just to recap, here's everything the Pacers have done since the season wrapped. They extended their franchise point guard for the next five seasons and have ensured that a 20 and 10, nearly 50, 40, 90 guy will be on the roster for at least the next five years with so much room still for him to get better. They had one of the best drafts out of anybody, in my opinion, adding Jairus Walker, a high level defensive four who immediately fills a position of need while also being the best player available to that team. And he's also got really intriguing offensive upside. They also added Ben Shepard, one of the best shooters in this entire class with intriguing defensive upside. They brought in Bruce Brown, a championship level role player on a very team friendly deal, who I think is immediately going to make this team better and bring some tenacity to the roster that they were really needing. They added Obi Toppin, a guy with a ton of potential still that they can give an expanded role for two second round picks. Like they've done everything right. There's not a single move so far that the Pacers have made that I haven't thought was worthy of an A plus grade. Indiana was already one of the most fun young teams in the entire league to watch this past season. They're going to be even more fun now with Obi Toppin in catching lobs with Bruce Brown, getting stops and running the ball up in transition, kicking it to Tyrese Halliburton, who kicks it out to Miles Turner, who knocks down a three. Miles Turner gets a block. The ball goes to Benedict Matherin, who dunks on somebody on the other end. It's going to be so much fun to watch Indiana basketball. They are immediately an S-tier league pass team. And it's not just that. Like, this is a team that I think has the chance to compete for a playoff spot as soon as this upcoming year in the Eastern Conference. Again, I note the fact that they were above 500 halfway through the season before Tyrese Halliburton dealt with an injury. If he stays fully healthy this year, we see jumps from Benedict Matherin, from Andrew Nemhard, from Obi Toppin in an expanded role. If Bruce Brown does what he does in Denver, if Miles Turner is again one of the best stretch big rim protectors in the entire league, if Jairus Walker helps out defensively even a bit like 
this team could be a lot better than they were this past season, where again, they were in the playoffs halfway through the season before their franchise point guard got injured. Now, I'm not guaranteeing a playoff spot or anything because there is always variance with young rosters, but I do think regardless of if they make the playoffs or not, this is a really special core that is brewing over there in Indiana. They've done a great job of continuously bringing in interesting young talent, pieces that fit next to each other really, really well. And I just overall think that within the next few seasons, Indiana is going to be one of the scariest teams in the Eastern Conference. And it might start as soon as next year if the development is rapid, if the pieces fit as well as I think that they might. Not to mention the fact that they're head coached by Rick Carlisle, who's, in my opinion, still one of the most underrated coaches in the entire league. I like what he's done over there in Indiana. And I think having a guy with that championship pedigree to lead this young roster into this new era era is a great call. So yeah, with all that being said, I just want to show some love to one of my favorite young teams in the entire league. Super excited to see what Indiana does this upcoming season. I'll be watching every single game that I can because it's just going to be incredibly fun to watch these guys hoop. Uh, go ahead and comment down below how good you think the Pacers can be this upcoming season. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. If you want to hear some more team breakdowns, comment down below a team that you want to see me talk about in a full length video like this, you know, I want to do a few of them, at least for most of the teams in the league over the course of this offseason. So again, let me know some of the squads you want to see down below. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.